So hi everyone. This is kind of the continuation of the double O build and I wanted to show the next step when when it's in this form. Now I don't have binding on it yet. I don't have any purpling on it. I haven't done any of the, the stuff that makes it look pretty. But this is the point at which I do my cladney testing. So I want to do a quick little Cladney test with you. And I'll show you what I'm looking for and how I rate this as it sits right now. We've got the, the body sitting here. Now, I always put this up on little blocks so that if there's going to be vibration on the back, that it uh, that it doesn't get interfered with by sitting down on the on whatever it's sitting on. I use my coarse ground black pepper. Sprinkle it all around. Now something's going to get in the sound hole. Vacuum cleaners are for that purpose there. Get that out. I don't do a whole lot right off the bat. So, I've got this all aligned. We're going to start with the lower than air resonance frequencies and see what we get. Now I'm going to put on some earmuffs because this just gets loud. Okay? So, here we go. We're starting at about 11. We're stepping up one hertz each time. Okay, bingo. We've got something at 13. That shows that this is a really responsive top. Okay, for it to show this low. Okay, we've got something at 17. Eighteen, nineteen. Okay, so we've had two two peaks just right here between ten and, and twenty. There's twenty seven, twenty eight, thirty. So between 30 and, and 40, we're actually at 36 right now, we get quite a bit of activity. So, so this top is pretty loose, which is what I was aiming for. Got another one at uh, 48. That's 100. So this is definitely the air resonance kicking in here, big time. It's been going for the past, realistically, 30 hertz. 
So that's, that's a large range, and that's exactly what I was going for. Now, whether this can actually hold together under a pair of, you know, set of steel strings, we've yet to find out. Okay, so that takes it up to about 106. You can see this thing's really lively really lively for a steel string this is insane of course you can see that it comes all the way up moves the sound hole now, I did quite a bit of scalloping on the the upper X brace which is why that's happening okay let's let's move it up a bit um. stopping on 58 okay we're starting to ramp up again this is 168 10. Obviously we've got a really big range that the, the air and the top resonance are responding to. And you can see that pattern is coming all the way up over to the sound hole. So from here on down is all active. So this thing is really screaming. It's probably, I don't know if the camera is uh, damping down the sound or not, but it's really loud. Right now we're at 212. It looks like it might be heading down in, in power at this point. We'll see. Three thirty, we have what we're calling a cross dipole, which is to say there's two main vibrating areas here and here, and there's right where the bridge is going to be. There's pretty much no movement, so it'll be interesting to see what this does at that uh, frequency. So anyway, at this point, it gets boring. You just go through the motions and, and more patterns show up. There's actually another pattern. I went through this before. Another pattern, the same pattern, at a, about 30 hertz more than this. So we've got duplicate responses going on at different frequencies, which is also interesting. Um, but the main point is I wanted to see how responsive this instrument was and it looks like it's going to be extremely responsive as is so I'm not going to touch the insides anymore it uh, it's looking really good now in order to find out what the actual response is in terms of the peaks 
I need to do a tap test on that and run it through a, a spectrum analyzer to see um, what those are. And then see how that, that, that's going to affect what I do with the bridge, whether I use a lightweight bridge or a, a heavy bridge. If, uh, if the resonances are about where I want them in terms of the air and the top resonance, you know, being at those magic numbers that I mentioned earlier in one of my videos, then I'll put a lightweight bridge on it. If I want, if it looks like they're too close together and I want to affect how the top responds and, and lower that resonance on the top, I'll put a hev heavier bridge on. And it won't be a different style, but it will be a different wood. So I would use Sapele for the light wood and uh, either rosewood or, or an ebony for the heavy wood. Um, probably, probably an ebony if it needed to move a lot. So there you have a little secret there. There you go.